Hello and welcome to another edition of the program, Total Woman on AD4 TV Radio. My name is Mute Olori. Business and tourism has a pivotal role to play in achieving the objectives at the heart of the 2030 Agenda for Sustainable Development. In particular, the commitment of gender equity and the empowerment of women is at the focal point. Also, tourism has been proven to provide pathways to empowerment and the opportunity for tourism to make a difference using women cannot be overstretched. Since women's concentration in tourism has gained them popularity in the sector, their potential to contribute fully is currently unshakable. Yes, you heard me. Currently unshakable. So on this episode of Total Woman, we seek to unravel how women are changing and can change the narratives in the sector of tourism. So with me on the show today, to talk on this is the CEO, Elkan Travel and Tours Limited. She's also the publisher of Safara African Magazine, a travels magazine. She's the president, Women in Business and Tourism Society of Nigeria. My guest, Sophia Khan. Thank you. Good it's good to have you on the show today. Good to be here. Thank <laughs> you so much. So, my first question, what are you doing in tourism? How did you get there? Why the interest in tourism? Uh, I think it's passion. I love traveling. So when I want to start a business, I thought of what will I, what should I do? I just said, okay, let me do, you know, passion to profit. <laughs> Follow your passion. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> so that's nice. So um, can you enlighten us about what the tourism industry is like now? Well, right now, before the COVID, it was all about, uh, outside Nigeria, outside Africa. Uh, but the COVID, you know, they said everything that has a bad side has, has a, a good, good side. side. It made us realize, you know, we should look inward. So right now, in the tourism industry, we are looking at developing our domestic tourism, which we are blessed with immensely. Because there is no state in Nigeria that does not have two mind-blowing tourism site destination or activity yeah. because a lot of people think when you think of tourism a lot of people think it's just about travel tourism is a whole lot it's wide we have agricultural tourism we have fashion tourism we have food tourism we have culture tourism we have uh, transportation we have entertainment we have the construction tourism you know, building, all those things are the value chain oh. in the tourism business. So when we look at it that way, which we have not been doing in Nigeria, but we start looking at it with the women in business and tourism, that is what we intend to do, changing the narrative. We want to promote tourism through, or through this sector. We'll have promote tourism to fashion, through culture, through, and we are engaging people from all these sectors and our members are drawn from all these sectors. So if, come when it comes to transport, yeah. we are talking to the transport union, the, can we give your drivers orientation? This is what happened outside the country. One of the things you'd see in Dubai is, no driver talks to you rudely. They behave nicely to you because most times they are the first people you meet mm -hmm. from the airport. So, you know, not the way people just talk. Oh. <laughs> so all those we are trying to do to change the narrative. And we won't say thank God to COVID, but it has helped us to look inward. You know, listening to you uh, pointing out these different sectors in tourism, one would never really think that, you know, we could have transport tourism. Yeah. But with your examples, honestly, it reminds me of times when I had to travel and then you get the drivers telling you that please, I remember a trip I went to Ghana. I booked my hotel and everything. And then I took this airport taxi and the driver was like, why did you choose the hotel you're going to? Mm. This hotel is better. There's this, there, there's that. Do you know at that point, I changed my room? Yes. 
They are the first people you actually meet. And when you interact with our drivers, you find that they don't even know if tourism is going on, if they are part of it, mm. if they should be nice to the guests from the airport. Because even if I'm going from here to Kaduna, I'm tourism. I'm going to take the rail, I'm going to stay in the hotel, I'm going to eat food, I'm going to buy some souvenirs. Mm. You know, all those things are tourism. And that's why we are encouraging, okay, let's develop our tourist site. Let's promote our tourism. Because people will surely come. We are not the, bad, we are not the worst nation on earth. You know? Like I was telling someone that before the COVID, I planned to go to Yemen, Afghanistan. That was on my travel bucket list for 2020. And I'm sure the person looked at you like, And I said, what are you going to do? I said, man, do you know what's like, you know, to just go and see how war happens and how the Taliban... Tourism is about experience. You know, that's why they say if you travel, you never lose money. Mm. You never lose money. But if you buy assets, it's, it will fade, it will go away. But travel, the experience you get, that magical moment, it never goes away. It stays with you, makes you more educated. And you know, you know, when you interact with other people, you find that we have more similarities than differences. Then you wonder, what the heck, why are we fighting? Exactly, exactly. <laughs> so when I say tourism can end terrorism, people say how? Mm. Because if you travel and learn other people's culture, you know how they live. You now wonder why are we even fighting? And, and then you have more value for you people. You have more value for people. Then the ter terrorism will now start going down. You, it's, it's the truth. Well, I see your passion. And I, I realize that a lot of women are in this industry. Uh, they may not be at probably the top notch, but we have a lot of women. Why, why is it like that? Because women are, we have, I'm sorry to say, we have a way of limiting ourselves. Hmm. You know, a woman feels most of, most of the women that got into this industry got, it, got in like, okay, if I'm doing this business, I can have time for my kids. I can have time, what can I do? I have time for my kids and they now get in. So they remain at that level. Even though women are um, like 67% of the tourism mm -hmm. industry, but we are still at the lower. You have an idea, the men carried it out. You know, they are risk takers. Mm -hmm. A mm -hmm. man does not believe that. I do business, I win, I lose, no problem, I move on. But we women, we are too calculative. Hmm. I think that's one of the limits. We don't, we don't aspire high. And we don't like to take those kind of risk. We don't want to take risks. But risk. they don't know that even pregnancy and carrying a baby. If I'm waking up, <laughs> it's even a risk. Like, if you, you like, know, like my natural. elder brother used to say to me when we were younger, I would say, hey, you say what? You know, if you had to die, now you agree made them burn you. As long as you are born, you'll die one day. You've been born, you'll die one day. Mm. And life is about risk. I was talking to my women one day. I said, and I said, I just asked somebody. I said, if I come walk into your office now, I tell you, I have a deal for 500 million. I said, automatically, your interest is off because you feel it's above you. But if I go to a guy with that same proposal, in fact, when I did sleep, now the guy will, the guy will be the one calling me mm. to say, say, how far, how far, far now? Have you, have you seen the guy? And he will see to the end. Mm. If he fails, he will satisfy his conscience that, that he pushed. He pushed. Through, yeah. But the woman will say, no, ah, no. So, but, so, so that's why we find 67% of women in the industry, but they are occupying the lower cadre. Working for the men. They are working the men at any. Mm. <laughs> So, so, but that's about that's so about to change. For for this strength we have, how come we've not been able to use this same strength of numbers to pull ourselves to that point where we begin to be the voice, you know, when it comes to tourism in Nigeria? Well, because I know when it comes to advertising, tourist sites, or all those things, women are at the forefront. <laughs> but when it comes to policy, in fact, we once had a um, DG tourism. I know the troubles and the struggles she, she went, went through. through. She was simply just being a woman trying to do something. You such know, a one thing. of the things our society do to us is as soon as you get into the position, there's like a placard in front of you. You're a woman, no? 
Mm. Do you understand? And if you're not strong, will and dogged, you will allow that to affect you. The women we've seen on top are the women that look at that uh, maybe uh, stereotype and, stere and, 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 and kick and it off. off. Yes, you know they they shatter the glass ceiling and move because a lot of people sometimes, unfortunately, even our spouse will be telling us, "Sick it is, don't you know you're a woman?" Do you understand? Even your mother will tell you that women don't do this thing. <laughs> The, so, mm. but if you, the women that have been, that are there, they are the ones that have shattered the glass, the break the stereotype and move on. But a lot of us allow that thing they put in front of us immediately to get to us. So it slows us down. And sometimes it's mentality. Because interacting with women, I know that we have, unfortunately, we have the power. We multitask. We are talented. We have the, what it takes to get the job done. But is the willingness there? If the willingness is there, how is your mentality? Do you think you can do it? Or are you listening to the people or you are listening to the voice in you that is telling you you can do it? And they know they can do it. Mm. But thank God we are waking up. Most of the association, most of the association in the tourism industry, at least 70 percent are headed by women right now that's where i want to go how are we what are we doing to change the narrative because it's so important um i see a few and, and and those who have occupied um a position in in the tourism industry in nigeria have done exceptionally mm -hmm. well well but you know we just find the pocket of it you know once a yeah, while once a while there are so few people up there there are so many of us down here <laughs> but with people like you joining the <laughs> industry um and then you know we, earlier we we're talking about you know pageants and other forms that are being used to promote mm. uh tourism what, what are you doing now you know women in general to see how they change the narrative yeah we are trying to we we do we do educate them we pull them out and tell them they can do it. It's not, it's not easy, but we are not here yet, but we'll get there. It's still like strange to them because of course, when you're doing this thing, hmm. you understand the stereotype, the society will fight back. And unfortunately, it's the same way women they use to get back to you, to tell you that which is, what, which is she to say she be? Who is she to come and change things? Hmm. Because they like the way it is. They like it, the fact that they are using the women to step up and the women are just there. Now you're asking the women, don't mind anything as long as you know you can do it. You can't do it. Step up the game. But how challenging is it? It is very it challenging is, yes. for women. It is. Because I, 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 since, I, since I became the president of WIBAT, Women in Business and Tourism Nigeria, it's a Pan-African association, it's in other African countries, the Nigerian chapter. And I came up with this, like, okay, we're going to promote tourism. The first thing I heard, uh, what's all this, you know, the sector? And I said, you promote tourism, we travel. Countries have tourism in all these sectors, why can't we do it? Tourism is not all about travel. And you've you find out that you get challenges everywhere. I started respecting the women up there, mm. people like Ngozi Kujewela. I, I can only imagine what they have gone through to get to where they are. You know, you get things attack all, you know, I don't know why. Maybe they don't want, I think they know our strength. And <laughs> probably this old adage of women should be seen and, and not, not heard. heard yeah it's still there silently i'll tell you it's still there silently so but we are changing the narratives it's little step but we know we'll get there because we are beginning to see that we have to do it and have we must <laughs> have we must <laughs> all right i've been speaking with my guest sophia khan she is the ceo of uh, Elkan Travels and Tours, and also the president of uh, Women, um, 
in business, in business and tourism society nigeria all right we're going to take a short break when i come back we'll be looking at the impact of the social of uh, tourism on the economy and uh, of course national um, nation growth um through tourism so please don't go away i'll be right back ad4 tv radio with focus on education with emphasis on research and innovation science and technology women and girl child education children health youths and sports socio-political and economic reforms security environment entrepreneurship and entertainment will give you information at your fingertips learn on the go follow ad4 tv radio on facebook twitter linkedin instagram and youtube ad4 tv radio reliable and credible we love you ad4 tv Welcome back. It's still Total Woman on AD4 TV Radio, and we're talking tourism. And my guests, you can see, have passion, you know, about what tourism is and what tourism can be, especially when women are at the lead. Okay, so while we're talking, Sophia Tan, you mentioned the different kinds of tourism. Yeah. You talked about agricultural tourism. Uh, construction tourism okay one of, <laughs> one of the things we did when we came with uh, women in business and tourism was uh, we I asked I said why is it that there are so many estates and we yet when we want to have events everybody is struggling for international conference center the only reason is because we don't involve the real estate, the construction people, to come and see what can be done in tourism. If you have malls, we travel, we go. It's like Dubai. You can do without going to any other tourist site and just, just say you want to. This is the mall. I, have a, I mm. had a trip that it was just mall. I call that, <laughs> I said mall, a mall tour was mm. what I had on that trip to go visit every mall in Dubai. And I didn't finish. Because it was a five day trip, and I was supposed to do two to three malls in a day. I found out I was doing one in a day. Because if I go around, and you know in their mall they have event center, maybe on top, they have movie, they have and, and so food court, yes. they have so many activities. Yes that you can you, you can go to dubai for one week and decide to do only dubai mall and i tell you you might not finish it so and i said if we can bring in the construction, construction people the real estate people they cannot see what is in tourism that is a huge mm. business because i noticed that one of the things that people don't understand that there's a huge uh, potential, business potential in tourism. So they thought it's just a leisure thing. <laughs> By the way, Madam, if you want to start business, you go do travel agency, because that's what we mm. know, mm. travel agency. It's much more than that. You can be a destination management company. You can be a tour operator. You can be a tour packaging operator. Or you can just be even a lifestyle. You can just person. be an advisory yeah. company. You can do. There are different types of vacation. Mm. You just uh, vacation is not a one fit all. You can go for study vacation. You can go for a book reading vacation. You can go for shopping vacation. You can have a family time. You can go for writing vacation. So it's not a one fits all. And it's not a luxury, it's a necessity. So how, how will tourism, or how have it been able to... I'm worried about my country, because you mentioned quite a lot about other countries, Dubai here, Kenya mm -hmm. there, you know, Ghana is coming up with its tourism. Seriously, we have Mauritius, strongly. We have, you know, other African countries, they, they, South they, Africa, you know, they're all there. And, and we see the impact of, of, of tourism and, and the money being made, the, the percentage of um, um, tourism contributor to the GDP. What is happening in my country, Nigeria? In Webert, we say tourism is the new oil. 
and until I don't know which is which is it that the government is not interested or they don't understand how big and the potential of tourism I don't know which is which either they are not interested or they don't understand because we have it even the states that are saying, oh, we need the money from the federal government. They don't need it if they can develop their tourist site. Do you know there's a desert in Yobi that when I saw the pictures, <sighs> Dubai desert that chides me. Wow, in Nigeria? In Nigeria. Northern Nigeria? Yes. The not, the not is even... They not have some mind blowing tourism destination that they don't even know that is a destination. Hmm. Do you understand? When I started my magazine, I did I did, I picked some places that people don't know exist. I did uh, the suspended lake in Oyo. There are only two suspended lakes in the world. Hmm. And one is in Nigeria. The other is in America. Well, yeah, America or Canada. America. People didn't know about it until they read it. They were not like, I was getting calls. Do you th is this in, in this Nigeria? country? Yeah. I said, yes. And they were like, so why don't we know about it? That's one of the problems. We don't promote tourism. Growing up, all we heard was London, Paris, America. And even when we heard things about the granite pyramid, the cocoa farm, or those, the, the Yankari, we just heard game, them as, we just heard you know, them, just there was their no... game reserve and all those, you know, and then we just, okay, where do we go for Christmas? Or where, where do we just go? Just go. Just go. You know, without... But we don't even think... Understanding, I, Me you know? growing up, we never looked at... I grew up in Kano, and uh, we have in Kano a 500-years-old 500 dye pit in Kano that I never oh. visited until I got into tourism. And I started doing... 500 years yes. old dye pits. Yes. Yes, eh? Wow. And it's very close to my house in Kano. I hear it, but there was no interest because nobody was promoting it. We didn't, growing up, we didn't feel, mm. we didn't see it like something you needed to see. Until I started doing research as I got into the tourism industry. And I said, this right in my own town. Mm. Do you understand all those things? And you look at it and you say, what? We do. There was there is this Kajuri castle, castle in Kaduna. I did a story in it. If you have seen a castle in movie, exactly. The is it a German guy that built it in 1985? It took him like seven years to build the castle. All those king ch uh, chambers and, and all the tourist sites. People can go in. People were going there, but an incident happened that he kidnapped and killed some people in 2019. So they stopped, and a lot of all this communion crash is going on there. But before then, there was nothing heard about this place. We have a lot, but we don't promote it. We don't talk about it. State government are not even interested in tourism. Very few, a kitty, maybe Lagos, the others, they don't, if you're talking to them about it, say they don't want to hear. It's not that they say, I have mm. approached mm. <laughs> Because what we intend to do in Webat is, what is in your state? What can we promote in Kano State? What can we promote in Kaduna? What can we promote in Bochi? What can we promote in, in Ondo, mm. in Uyo, in Enugu? What can we promote? But when you say, okay, you identify some site and you say, okay, we want to promote, even if you don't want, what we intend to do is attract, bring in investors. Mm. If you go to Gurara Force, Ninja State, mm. we go there for picnic. We go all the way before the security thing, all the way to Gurara. If you get there, you won't even find a sachet water to buy. 
So if you are going, you go with everything. Your music, your water, mm. your food, your... Mm. Nothing. Mm. Put up a resort there. Like you said, a, a reading tourism, a writing tourism. Maybe I, I need to do something and say, where do I go to? Where do I go because to? Because there's a resort oh, in that Have area. you been to Gurara Falls? I could Falls? just go in there and you can imagine how inspiring it oh, could be. Oh, have you been to Gurara Falls? I've not been. We have it, oh, we are blessed. <laughs> At least two mind-blowing destinations is in every state of Nigeria. Some you have 10, some you have 8. I'm saying at least 2. We have, we've not started with our, the activities. We've not started with, okay, how do we do uh, agricultural tourism? Okay, Oyo has cocoa. What do we do with it? We travel out. They take us to factories. Where they do? They take us where? They Chocolate factories. Chocolate factories. And there are all tourist sites. And then we go see the thing. You How see you from made, where they're farming it, where they're getting it from, where they come take back. it. You see from start mm. to finish, mm. and they give you the chocolate to eat. Mm. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> we're, 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 we're glad we have people who are passionate about it. How do we ca capture the interest of more women into this industry strategically and intentionally, putting them at the top? And also the younger ones, what can we begin to do differently? Yeah, that is, when it comes to educational tourism, which is part of the sector, that's why we are catching them young. By, uh, like for this year, World Tourism Day, one of the program we have for the day is competition, writing competition, to catch them, to start making them get aware of their environment, what's happening. Because we looked at it that even if they don't know, thank God for Google, thank God for inter mm. uh, the, the internet, they will now go and search. By searching for one thing, they will see several and it will catch their interest. They will now start saying, wow, we have this in this country. You catch them young. For women, we are already in the industry. The only thing is to build on what we have. We have the numbers. We need to be determined to change things, it can't be the way it used to be. That's why we but as Logan is changing the narrative. Women on the move changing the narrative. The narrative needs to be changed. And like it's I will say again, change we well, must change. change. Thank you so much. Thank you so much. And so that's the precedent of um, women in business and tourism society in Nigeria, uh, Sophia Khan, and she's been sharing her passion on tourism and as you can see there's so much more to do so when we talk about empowering women to participate and thrive hard fully in economic life this is one way to go and i'm i'm sure your interest has been ignited today see what you and i can do to build a stable and a decent society for women and to see how we can take Nigerian tourism from local to international as required by the Sustainable Goals 2020, 2030. Thank you very much for joining me. I'll see you again next week. My name remains Muti Olori. Bye-bye.